this is Raquel how you doing so perception is so crucial in all that we do some weeks ago I posted a vlog on um, consistency that led to substance abuse right and the, the whole point of the vlog was if you do something consistently and then your brain will just go into a routine and if you don't continue it you will experience um, consequences and one of the examples i gave was because i'm a health freak you know what should i eat what should i drink what should i work out i start my day every day with yoga 20 minutes a day and then i go down to my gym and then i work out and i talked about how i realized a couple of times when i didn't work out how my muscle was telling me we need that right it had become addicted to me exercising and i also talked about um, something I experienced a few years ago when I used to have one glass of white wine every night and what happened when I didn't have that glass on occasion at night how I would experience um, negative components and even though you know the purpose of the red wine was for health benefits it had a negative effect on me and I understand that some people can smoke all their life to 96 and never get cancer and some people can smoke two boxes of cigarette and Next year they have cancer, right? So I understand that the body works differently. So I got this call. Um, well, <laughs> let me back up. Before the call, you know, I I received DM saying, you know, I watch your vlog and I wasn't gonna exercise anymore. And then I saw your vlog and I decided to continue my exercise. And I'm really great that it has helped um, some people to continue on their positive trend. But I also received this call, okay, from someone and she went to my website, she got my number, she called and she said, thank you for your vlog, I want to talk to you about um, this, <laughs> oh my God, about what you posted about the wine, I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions and we're going to have a discussion and I'm like, oh dear God, go right ahead. And she's like, so have you seen the movie Flight? And I'm like, yeah, with Denzel, who haven't seen Denzel, you know, the movie, that's a, that's a great movie. She's like, yeah, okay. So you recall the scene in the hotel, um, what happened the next day when, when he woke up? I said, yeah, he had consumed all the alcohol. She said, has that been you? I said, no. She said, um, do you get drunk when you drink? I said, no, I don't get drunk. I don't do the busting, my glass of wine would take me about an hour to drink. I would do that night after I've gone to a long day of teaching or practicing law and I just need to simmer down so I can get to sleep. She said, okay. She said, so do you, have you been to AA? I'm like, no, they have a sponsor. I'm like, no. She said, so I'm very confused about this abuse part. Mm. She said, I am an alcoholic, meaning her, she. And she said, you don't experience what I experienced. So now I'm like, okay, what, what just happened? And she was like, I appreciate the vlog, but you don't experience what we experienced, right? You didn't get your nightcap and your body went into rebellion over a nightcap. And you realized that your body went into rebellion and you did something about it in like, I don't know, 10 days or something you said, and you were good. She said, for me, it's not like that. Like, I actually have a disease. So, I felt like crawling under a rock and just disappearing completely. Because what I meant for good, apparently, um, someone perceived it to be um, minimizing their experience. So I explained to her that what I experienced mirrored, not mirrored, they were withdrawal symptoms. And she's like, yeah, but many folks, um, you know, when they go to cold turkey, it hurt them. Okay. So, the perception, as you can see, of what substance abuse is, 
differ. That perception carries into the courtroom. And it carries into the courtroom because there is, I came across this article where this lady has a history of alcoholism, history of being addicted to prescription drugs, and her will is being challenged. Her will is being challenged because it is said that the consistent consumption of alcohol, the consistent consumption of uh, prescription drugs permanently impaired or altered um, her mindset, which then affected her will. So here's the thing. Just because someone experience substance abuse does not mean that their will becomes invalidated. If at the time of drafting the estate planning documents that person is under the influence and if at the time that influence impaired their decision making then the will can be challenged. Right? And so in this article It was said that because she was in such great pain in the hospital, the amount of drugs that they gave her changed her behavior up to the point where she wrote the will. And so because it changed her behavior based on the testimony of witnesses around her, not even the ones who witnessed the document, but just other people around her, whether it's a bartender or the nurse or, you know, all the folks who were um within her her circle the court um used their testimony as well to make a decision if at the time although she may have witnesses to her with at the time was her capacity impaired and so the nurses testified that no, she was always alert, she was good. But the doctors testified that no, just because she was alert doesn't mean that she wasn't affected by the pain medication that could have, that um, negatively impacted her will. So the will was um, invalidated and Mm. So I just want you to be very careful as to who your witnesses are because some witness can testify that, you know, I witnessed her sign the will or him sign the will, but I've always known them to be high constantly, right? And you really need to be very careful that you're not writing your will when you are delirious. I got a call one day. Um, from a federal judge and his niece or somebody was in the hospital but someone had poor fraternity and they were using a poor fraternity to draft or to to let me know her intent this is what she wants I want you to draft the will she has two children she has no estate planning I need for you to do this etc so I'm like, you know, um, when you give someone poor fraternity, they have the power to do certain things. In any event, um, when it comes to estate planning, I need to speak to the person. I, I, listen, I, I need to make sure that this is the intent of the person. So they're like, you got to come to the hospital quickly. You got to come, Raquel. Time is of the essence. So I know what that means. So I'm like, Bella, I'll be right back and everything. And so this was in DC, but she's a New York resident, but she was hospitalized in DC, which is why I could have done it because I'm a New York resident. I'm a New York attorney. And now I am speeding, like I am 
you know, I am going. I'm like, okay, if I get a ticket, it's taking off to pay the ticket. But I got to get to her because I don't know how, I don't know how long she's going to be with us, right? So, you know, I rushed there. I got to the hospital. I'm like, park anywhere, you know. So I parked right in front where it said um, emergency. You know, you're going to get to it and everything, you know. I rushed, um, I rushed inside. I look at the, the guard. I wink at the, the guard. I, I point my car. I show it. I'm like turning. I'm, I'm rushing to the bedside of the person who needs to look at these estate documents, sign this estate document. So I got there. I'm running up the stairs. I'm running up the stairs because the elevator is, is taking too long. And I got there and I bust through the door. <sighs> Man. Heads are hung. People are wailing. And I just, my heart just dropped. My heart just. <sighs> she slipped into a, she slipped into a coma. They pulled the plug next day. She died in test it. And, um, in any event, um, one of her siblings said to me, Raquel, she was delirious anyway, so she probably wouldn't know what she was going to be signing. And let me tell you something. If she was delirious, I would not be able to do those documents to sign. Even though her intent was to make sure that her children go to X amount of person and, and, and they get this, I can't do it. Because while you were when you're in your right mind and you're with us, that is the moment that you need to put your estate planning together. Perception is everything. And just like in the case with a lady who all those folks testify about her perception of, of being engaging in substance abuse, which affect her will. Um, another person saying she was delirious, even if she had two witnesses, would have affected her will or her estate. So I hope that helps someone, right? Just make sure that when you do your estate planning, you are alert, you are um, not under the influence of anything. And I hope this helps someone. Yeah, so take care of your friends. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family, your dog, your cat, your turtle, all living creatures. And as they say in Jamaica, see you later, yeah? Which means I'll catch you later. All right, ciao, ciao.